So you wanna start making some more income from home and you're trying to capitalize on this great opportunity. Maybe you look into selling products on Amazon. You're looking to make an extra two, four, six thousand dollars a month. So you start looking at this business and then you realize, oh shit, I need money to start this business. And quite a lot too. To start selling on Amazon, you need two, four, six thousand dollars. So you think, hey, I guess that's the end of the line. Well, the great Wayne Gretzky, the greatest hockey player of all time, when he started, when he was a kid, he knew he wanted to play hockey. So his parents bought him a pair of skates. But the skates were too big. It could have been the end of the line, but instead he got creative. He got resourceful. He stuffed the skates with socks and made it work. And that is what you're gonna have to do if you wanna start an Amazon FBA business and you don't have the money to get started. You're gonna have to get creative. You're gonna have to get resourceful. So this is what I would do if I had to rebuild my seven figure Amazon brand and I had less than $1,000 to start. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. What's up Empire Builders, JT Franco here, the no bullshit Amazon guy here on YouTube. So if you wanna learn about how to actually sell on Amazon without all the Lamborghini fool's gold, then make sure to subscribe for more videos. And I'm gonna get right to the chase, okay? I've been doing this for years and it always comes to the same stop, the same wall when I talk to people that wanna start an Amazon business. They go, holy smokes, it costs a lot of money. What am I supposed to do? I don't have money, I'm trying to make money and that's why I wanna get into this business and here you're telling me I need to invest $3,000, $4,000, $6,000. $6, JT, if I had that money, I wouldn't be in this problem in the first place. And usually I say, too bad, so sad, that's the fact of life. You need money to get started on Amazon FBA. And I've been doing that for a while because that's the truth, right? That is the fact of life. You need money to get started in this business for the most part. But you know what, I decided that's not good enough. I need to give you guys an option for those of you that wanna get started, that don't have the, the money to get started, but you know you're passionate, you know you're ready to go. Um, so this is what I would do, honestly. We're gonna get right to it right now. The first step is to understand your goal because your goal is gonna have to change. When I coach students, when I coach my clients, I'm trying to get them to 10K, 100K in revenue and sales right away. But if you're starting with a very low budget, that cannot be your goal because that's not very realistic. If you're starting with less than $1,000 or like $1,000, you know, at most, you can't be expected to turn around and make six figures the next month. But what your goal can be is to actually make a profit, be profitable, launch a product, get the experience and learn from it, okay? So this is what this can be focused on. This is how can you actually launch a product so you can say, hey, hooray, I'm an Amazon seller. I'm not just someone who's watching on the sidelines anymore. I'm not gonna be able to quit my job. I'm not gonna be able to hire employees, but guess what? I'm making 100 bucks, I'm making 200, maybe 500 bucks a month with this product. I've proven this product and now I can look into scaling it up. So step one, that's the goal, okay? Now, what am I gonna do first? The first thing, because the most expensive thing, but also most variable part of Amazon is picking your product right? If you want to spend less money, you got to find a product that's going to cost you less money to source, but not only be less money to source in terms of the price, right? Also, it has less competition because that will be easier to rank. You're going to need less units and you can get in there and start proving and be, you know, start making money without a bunch of competitors bloodying the market. So you need to find a product that I would do at least is find a product with lower search volume. Okay, so when you're doing your product research, the number one thing you're looking at is how much search volume does this product have, right? Because that is gonna show how much demand your product has. And then you're gonna look at the competition. Uh, that's when you start looking at reviews. But most people are gonna tell you, you know, launch a product that has at least 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 searches a month. Now that's all great uh, if you have money to start because of course you're gonna have a really high, um, you know, a really high demand product. You can get in there, start selling. If it has low competition, you can, you know, start selling a thousand units a month. Now here's the problem. If you're selling a thousand units a month, you need at least you know $1,000 if your unit cost is a dollar each. So you can't even be trying to sell that many units. You need to be looking to move less units, have less um, demand, but also be just be in a market that's really easy for you to take over. So have less competition. So what I would do is go ahead and try to find a product that has keywords that are like, you know, maybe 2,000 searches, 700, 500, 300, uh, all the keywords, all the different keywords for this product add up to maybe, you know, 10, 20,000 in total, but like the main keywords really only have 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 searches a month. Now, I'm not just saying launch a low demand product. I'm saying launch a, a low demand um, product, a market with keywords that have low competition. So if you see a market that has, you know, maybe 2,000 searches and then 
by the way, when I'm talking about keywords, let me break this down because I realize this is probably more of a beginner friendly video. When I'm talking about keywords, I'm talking about, let's say you have this mouse, right? You wanna have as many different ways to say the same thing. So when someone searches this, they could search black mouse, um, small mouse, laptop mouse, a mouse and keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, wireless mouse. So all those different keywords are the different ways to say this thing. So if all those different keywords, all of them, or a lot of them are high opportunity, meaning, you know, maybe Bluetooth mouse is, has really, really, uh, it's very competitive, but you might find that black mouse with four buttons, because there's buttons on the side, um, is less competitive, right? So less competitors, same product, different keyword, but that's a high opportunity keyword for you now. So look for high opportunity keywords that have maybe less demand, less people searching for them, but less competition as well. And when I say less competition, I mean your competitor's products have less than 100 reviews, right? If you're going low budget, really stick to less than 100, less than 75 reviews for the competitors. And that's gonna give you uh, an easier, entry point into the market. For example, I want you guys to see this product, okay? Asian Broom. Now you're gonna see, okay, there's one outlier, 200 reviews, okay? But we're looking at this kind of straw grass broom, right? 65 reviews, 80 reviews, um, it's 29, 13, uh, let's see more, 11, one review, uh, 44, right? So this kind of product, and we're gonna look at the search volume now. So we pulled on our zombie base and it has about 11 or 1400 searches for this exact keyword, right? Asian broom. But I went ahead and I went to the Zombase uh, keyword tool. I searched Asian broom, grass broom and Asian broom. I did a couple searches for you guys. Um, and then what happens here at Zombase is they pull this, all these keywords that are related. I went ahead and I pulled all the most related ones to this thing. So when you search one of these things, right? Broom Asian, this thing, is which is a, a Vietnamese translation or Vietnamese name for it, right? So this kind of broom. And what you'll notice is that there's so many different keywords that are relatively low competition, right? The guys that are doing well, there's not very many reviews, 80, 29, they're four star, four star, four star, right? Four star, three and a half star. So there's opportunity here. And like most of the products on this page aren't even what you look for, right? Or like if you go back to Asian Broom, it's not exactly uh, what their people are searching for. So there is opportunity to be ranking here. The pictures aren't that great, right? These are all, the, all these keywords had like, 500, 12, or like five, less than 1400, right? Because the main one had 1400. Uh, so they're all relatively low demand, low competition, and not very great. Plus when you go, you know, these are selling for 28 bucks, right? What, $37, $19, and you go to Alibaba, and they're selling for literally 57 cents. So this is a perfect product example of like, you can buy, you know, 200 of these for 100 bucks, Right, you buy 400 for 200 bucks, uh, and you go and you flip them on Amazon, uh, and you're selling them for $20. So if you can find a product that has maybe lower overall search volume, that has um, less competition, meaning the competitors don't have very many reviews, and the reviews that they have are terrible, right? So if they're, they're three star reviews, you know, three and a half, four star overall reviews, then you can go in there and say, hey, what are they doing wrong? Uh, because obviously there's some demand here. What are they doing wrong? Uh, and how can I improve upon that? Now, that is gonna give you a great market to enter. That's gonna be a lot easier, a lot more of a niche market, not as big. Your, your, your ceiling, your high end is not gonna be as big, but you can enter there uh, and start making sales relatively easily. Okay, so that is step one. Step number two, you're gonna need a lower MOQ, right? A lower minimum order quantity because if you don't have much money, you can't go out and order 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 units. Now, when you go to Alibaba, um, when you're gonna source your product, there's gonna be an MOQ, right? Suppliers are gonna say, you need to order at least 1,000 units, otherwise it's not worth my time. Now, you're just gonna have to keep on looking. Either one, look by yourself, right? Try to find and try to negotiate um, a way to get your, that MOQ down, get it down to 200, get it down to 250, whatever you can afford to actually go ahead and go send to Amazon and test it out. Now, if you have a really hard time doing this, and I'll, you know, sometimes it's just not worth it for a supplier to work with you, right? You're a small business, you come to the supplier and say, hey, I need 150 units. They're gonna be like, what's the point, right? What's in it for us? We're gonna not make that much money and you're probably not gonna order again because you don't seem like you're a very serious seller. You seem like you're a newbie and what's the point of working with you? If that's the case, what I would recommend actually is go and get a sourcing agent. Now, when you're starting on a low budget, okay, most of the time you wanna do everything yourself, 
You don't want to start outsourcing and you don't want to start hiring people because you don't have the money to pay them. But when it comes to getting the MOQ and getting actually cheaper pricing, when it comes to negotiating your rates with Chinese suppliers, a sourcing agent is really going to help you out. Now the job of a sourcing agent, a sourcing agent is a middleman, right? So you're going to pay them and then they're going to go out and find a supplier that can make the product to your specifications and at your MOQ. Now the beauty of a sourcing agent is that the supplier knows that if they work with a sourcing agent, the sourcing agent himself has other clients. Having a good relationship with a sourcing agent benefits the supplier unlike having a relationship directly with you because you're a one-off company, you might not ever bring them more business, but a good sourcing agent may bring them more business. So they might be able to be more, uh, you know, have more leeway with a sourcing agent because they know that working with a sourcing agent has the potential um, for future orders with other clients, with other businesses to bring in more business and it's not just a one-off. So they're able to get down up to a lower MOQ most of the time. On top of that, the sourcing agent is gonna usually be local to China. They're gonna be able to speak the language. They're gonna be able to understand cultural differences. They might already have relationships, right? So having a sourcing agent is going to be the best way for you to negotiate uh, and for you to find a lower MOQ, maybe even get a lower price. Uh, and a good sourcing agent, especially if you're a beginner, a good sourcing agent will really be helpful to you because they're gonna organize a lot of the process, right? They're gonna show you, they're gonna from either from negotiation to paying or negotiation to actually getting the product to America, depending on the sourcing agent. Now, if you go to upwork.com, um, that's usually where I get people, um, you're gonna find sourcing agents anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks an hour. Okay, so 10 to 20 bucks an hour. So let's say $15 average. Um, and it's only gonna take them probably five to 10 hours to really find you and you know solidify a product manufacturer for you. So all in, that's about 150 bucks. Okay, 150 bucks to pay the sourcing agent, but it's a lot cheaper than having to pay a 1000 unit MOQ. So that's step number two, find a sourcing agent. So you found a product that has lower demand, really low competition area with a lot of keywords that are, you know, that are easy, high opportunity for your target. You found a sourcing agent that can go ahead and get you a lower MOQ, get you uh, a better rate uh, on the creation of this product. And now we're, you're gonna launch the product. So when you're launching the product, the biggest thing is going to be PPC, uh, getting traction, getting your you know original first few sales. Now again, you gotta be resourceful. Typically, I'll say run PPC, get the data, start your budget, thirty bucks a day, and just you know get all the information and start targeting keywords and you know run your automatic campaigns and then you know do different try to launch in different ways. But you can't do that. You can't afford to do that because we're starting on a budget, right? If I was to do this, I'm starting on a budget. I'm not gonna go and try and get you know you know, go by the book. Technically, you gotta throw the book out because the book, the first page of the book says start with $6,000. You don't have that, throw the book at the wall and be resourceful. So what I would do then is I would actually, and I would do this before the launch, I would start building a community, building an audience. Now, building an audience is as simple as creating a Facebook group, you know, going and not even creating a group, but going into other groups that are, you know, related to your product. What are you selling? What, who would be interested in this? Who is your target customer? And where are they um, congregating, right? Where are they already on the internet? Now, Russell Brunson's book, Dotcom Secrets, talks about this a lot. You gotta first pin down your dream customer, your dream client, who is actually gonna buy your product, and then you gotta find out where they are on the internet. Because when you're getting traffic, you're not, like when someone says get traffic to your website, you know, pay for ads, pay for traffic, you're not actually buying traffic. Traffic already exists. You, you're just funneling them to where you want them to be. So you just gotta find out where the traffic already is. What YouTube channels are they watching? What Reddits, what subreddits are they on? What kind of news feeds are they subscribed to? What Facebook groups are they at? Go in there and you know, go and start messaging people. Start talking and don't be like a spammer and say, hey, I'm launching a product tomorrow. Here's the product link. No one's gonna buy it, okay? You gotta actually create genuine interest, create genuine relationships uh, for people that would actually be genuinely interested in buying your product, okay? You just need five, 10, 15, 20 people that actually would be interested in buying your product. And this doesn't have to be online only, right? When you're, when you're building an audience, you're building a community, go out in the real world, right? Your friends, your family, go out to, I don't know, like, what are you selling, right? It always comes back to what are you selling? Are you selling dog things? Go to a dog park. Are you selling baby things? Go to Baby R Us or whatever, wherever. I don't know, if you actually have a kid, that would make more sense. You're not just a creepy guy sitting in Babies R Us trying to sell diapers. But go to where people actually are actually make you know connection and try to get people uh, in your community. You get the first five, 10, 15, say you get 25 sales, 
through your organic network of people that you've you know manually got out and messaged, you maybe you'll get a couple of reviews because they actually know you, right? You'll get two, three, four, five reviews. All of a sudden, you got five reviews, you got 20 sales, you're, you have really low competition, um, you know, keywords, you're ranking really high because there is no competition here. You've already discovered that. Boom, you have a product that's actually selling on Amazon. You learned a whole bunch throughout this process. You are now an Amazon seller. You didn't break the bank to do it. You had a sourcing agent find the product for you and all this can be done for less than a thousand bucks, right? You, you've now learned how to do how this works. Maybe you made your money back by now. All you had to do was be grindy, right? All you had to do was be resourceful. You did the manual labor. You went out and instead of doing automatic or buying traffic, you went out and found it yourself. Right? Instead of launching a product that already has so much demand, you found something that's more niche, something that's a little more tucked away in the corner um, that you know there's not many other people that are gonna try and sell, but you're not owning this market. And I've done this a lot of times, not because I had to, but because these kind of products sometimes just do really well and you never have to worry about them. You never have to really be stressed about hijackers and all these new competition coming in. You just kind of own this little market. It's a nice little market on Amazon. You're making a good 500 to you know 3,000 bucks a month. But now you might be thinking, how do I actually find these products that have you know lower competition and decent demand? Well, I would go ahead and click that video right over there. Watch that right now. It's gonna show you exactly how to find products fast um, using a really cool brand new method that's out there today. Or click my face to subscribe for more, more no BS content about Amazon FBA. Hopefully this helped you out. If you're starting on a budget, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see you later.